Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for visiting. If you are new to my channel, this is where I share my uh, handbag obsession. <laughs> so today is another handbag review video. This one is from Givenchy. I will get started. In this video, I will show you the features of this bag, the pros and cons. I will also uh, weigh the bag so that you can see how much um, how heavy the bag is or how light the bag is and uh, I will also compare this bag with two other popular bags just so you can get a sense of the size and the capacity side by side because it does have a, a bit of a unique shape and I think for those of you who are Givenchy fans will have already guessed which bag this is. So here we go. This is actually my very first Givenchy purchase. And it is the Antigona Mini. So this is the smallest version of their Antigona collection. And it is in the sugared goatskin leather, as you can see with this close-up. I think the way they describe it is so accurate because it does, it's not just grained, it has this um, shimmery sugared polish look with the texture and I've never owned a goatskin bag, so this is my first, and it feels actually really nice on the hands. And I chose the camel color. I think on some department store websites, it is listed as dark brown um, or medium brown, and that's the same color. It's this beautiful caramel camel color that I thought would be absolutely perfect for the fall and with fall neutrals. And for those of you who have watched my other videos, you know I'm a pretty big fan of lightweight bags and especially mini bags. So I had been eyeing the Givenchy Antigona bag for a few years now. Um, back a couple of years ago, it seemed like everyone was carrying the black one, the black shiny um, version of this but the larger size and all the celebrities were rocking it and they were photographed wearing this bag um, everywhere and I thought okay I like the structure of the bag I think it's very unique I think it's very classic um, it does seem to be very durable and would retain its shape for a long time um, but I was kind of sick of seeing the black patent one everywhere although I, I do think it's beautiful it's very um, polished looking and from what I understand it is super scratch resistant and water resistant so um, for those of you who were interested in the black one with the the patent leather I say go for it because it is a gorgeous bag I just I have a lot of black in general in my wardrobe and in my handbag collection so um, and I'm obsessed with camel for those of you who know me well um, whenever I see anything in camel I tend to get excited so I did hold out for this color and this size is really good for me because it is the mini but it's kind of a a large mini bag if that makes sense which is why I wanted to weigh it for you and also compare uh, the size side by side with some of the other bags that you might be more familiar with. But first, let me show you. This is the front. It has the Givenchy in silver hardware. This is the back. The handles are quite sturdy. They don't flop down. You can put them in the crook of your arm. Or you can just carry it in your hand. This is the bottom got leather feet. I would probably prefer metal feet but I'm just glad there's any type of feet at all <laughs> on this mini version so not bad. And then as you can see on the side it's got this unique sort of triangular shape very very structured. It's not going to lose its shape here. I don't like floppy bags. These will not, I don't think this will start to sag or become floppy. There's nothing in here except for a little bit of tissue paper, um, but I have carried some stuff in here and it's not sagged at all, so you wouldn't need a base insert or anything like that. So let me show you the inside. Actually, let me show you first this chunky zipper because it is a beautiful, beautiful zipper. It's quite prominent. See, it's not a dainty little zipper. It is quite... Um, I mean, 
it's deliberate design, I think, part of the design, I mean, and it is quite chunky and shiny. Okay, and then if you open with the tab here, the zipper pull, I will show you the strap in a minute. I just want to pull out the tissue paper. And like I said, I've used this bag several times already, but I always put the tissue paper back in just to keep it nice and neat. This is a little, um, I don't know what this is, sort of instruction booklet uh, that came with it. And I did purchase this for $17.90, except that I used Ebates when I ordered it through Neiman Marcus, and I got, at the time, 10% cash back, which is quite a, a good deal, I would say. Um, it saved me New York taxes and then a little bit more on top, so highly recommend Ebates if you're not familiar. It's an app. You can download it and get some cashback promos depending on where you shop. Okay, and then the inside is a canvassy material. Hope you, hopefully you can see it's, you see it's got, it almost reminds me of like linen-y cotton. It's not smooth, it's definitely not microfiber or anything like that. It's got a um, sort of like a rough canvasy feeling, but it is a lighter color, so it would help in terms of digging around and looking for things. It makes it easier to find your belongings. You've got one elastic pocket here. Actually, I put my lip balm, my chapstick, um, you could even put your card holder in here. The same on this side, same size as this pocket, except just not um, elasticized. And then on the other side, you have a pretty nice sized zipper pocket with the same silver, silver, <laughs> silver zipper. I've got some feminine hygiene products in here. I feel like every video I show you in the zippered compartment, I've got stuff going on in, in there. Um, that's where I put my products that I just want to keep discreet. I'm sure a lot of a lot of us do that. Um, this this zipper is the zippered compartment is large enough for passports so um, I'm able to fit all four of my family's passports in here and I think it would be a good travel bag because wait, is it stuck on something? Yes it is stuck on something. Let me just arrange this. Um, it would be a good travel bag because it has the zipper compartment for, let's say, your money or your passport or anything really important. And then you've got this really nice secure zipper on the top here. So there's nothing open. There's no way anyone can get in and out without opening the zipper. So I do think it's a pretty good uh, travel bag. Let me show you the strap and how this connects to the side of the bag here. So it's a little bit unique, at least for me. I've not seen, well, I don't own any bags like this. Oops. So as you can see here, they are D-shaped rings, and there's an opening. Can you see that? There's an opening, and there is an opening over here as well. Right there, there's like a little divot. Yeah, actually this side is not open, it's just a little indent or a divot. And as you can imagine, what you do is you just match up these parts here and it goes right through. And this part swivels, so you don't have to worry about whether or not you've got it on forward facing or backward facing. You can just adjust it after you hook it on. Same here, and this is an adjustable strap. I will show you a close up. Okay, so there you go. It goes on pretty easily and it's smooth. The only problem, and this is, I guess, one of the cons, because there's no secure clasp and it is this sort of, sort of open piece here, I have heard from other people that um, while they were out and about with the bag, this would somehow match up and just slip right off. So I don't think it was when they were actually wearing it on their shoulder, but um, before I started filming, I did plop the bag down and I could see how, you know, and before I started filming, 
this was all sort of assembled already and if this does match up when you're sitting down and you put the bag down somewhere maybe when you're out it could come undone so I don't love that part I do wish that Givenchy had put a lobster clasp or just something a bit more secure but I guess I don't know I don't know why how or why they made that decision but it may be just part of the design um, so that would be a con and then you do have the holes here so you've got one two three holes so it is adjustable and then one two sort of like spikes on this side so they're not they're not really I guess you could you may be able to adjust this side too I'm about five foot five and the way I have it here if I wear it on my shoulder it sits right below my hip and if I wear it crossbody, uh, it is perfectly fine as well. It hits right at my hip. So I think for uh, average heights, it should be fine with the adjustable holes here. Again, there are little spikes. I think this is a pretty cool part of the design. Kind of makes the bag more interesting because as you can see, the front and the back are pretty simple. Just has this structured shape and then if you look over here at the details you see kind of reminds me of the Valentino spikes a little bit this could be a pro and a con I think from an aesthetic standpoint it's a pro because again it does make the bag look more interesting um, it might be a con for some people who are afraid that this could scrape or scratch up against them or snag on, let's say, their sweaters. I do have two kids, and the first thing I thought when I opened this was, hmm, I wonder if they would just accidentally come, you know, let's say they want to run up on me or hug me, would they get scraped by this? But it's not super sharp. Like, I can run my thumb over it, and it's not going to... You know puncture me in any way so I think that could be a pro or a con again the feet I would say if it had metal feet it would be better but I'm not complaining because it is a mini bag and the fact that there are any feet at all is a good thing and I was worried that when I wear this bag this sort of unique shape here would not sit well meaning it would stick out it wouldn't hug my curves not that I have very many curves <laughs> um, I'm like a I'm just like a straw that's my body <laughs> a long straw um, but I know that that could be a concern for some people where you might not know how this sits on you when you wear it and I will tell you that while it is very structured it does have give here as you can see it's kind of smushy on the sides so I've noticed that when I do wear it let's say just on my shoulder and let it hang where my hip is it just kind of forms to my hip and it's quite comfortable so I wouldn't worry about that and if you're looking for a bag that is secure with the zipper can be worn multiple ways in the crook of your arm crossbody shoulder handheld um, this is a pretty versatile bag. I do think the camel in particular is really, really pretty, um, but it does come in multiple colors. I've recently saw, I've recently seen the dark burgundy, which I believe is the same sugared goatskin. It's got that shimmer, and it's just absolutely beautiful, beautiful. So, um, if you're looking to add a burgundy bag to your collection, I would highly recommend that you check it out. And let me just quickly weigh this for you. I'm going to weigh it with the strap so that it's a kind of a accurate. Sorry about the sirens again. There's always something. Yesterday was Halloween, so it was kind of a the city here was crazier than usual, <laughs> if you can imagine. But it was fun. Lots of people out and out and about in their costumes, and lots of cute little kids dressed as, you know, just adorable little creatures. <laughs> it was nice. So I'll put this back in. And for those of you who have watched my other videos, you probably know that I'm super, super anal about the weight of my bags. It's like one of the first things I ask when I go shopping, and it's one of the first things I look for when I'm reading the um, descriptions on the websites. And oftentimes I'm disappointed because the weights are not provided. So, you know, the typical 
dimensions like height, weight, depth are almost always available, but the weight is not. Um, and I have this thing that <laughs> those of you may already know, um, I do not like to wear bags that are more than one and a half pounds because I found that anything over one and a half pounds for my frame definitely starts to hurt my shoulder or I just start getting really tired of wearing it and it's not super comfortable and living in the city I do walk a lot so it's not like I can plop my bag you know next to me in a car I don't have a car um, so weight is super 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 important so I'm gonna just really quickly show you my tiny kitchen scale I ordered this on Amazon from a company called Etexity. I don't know that I would re recommend this if you are on the market for a scale. It was super cheap. I think it was like $15 or something like that. So, And the reviews looked good, so I just ordered it really quickly. Um, but I don't think it's super accurate. I think it's actually better for like grams if you're um, weighing blueberries or something in the kitchen. I don't think it's meant for handbags, but it is, um, the unit is in, uh, changeable, so I made it into pounds and ounces, and so I've been able to get at least a rough estimate of the weights, and I did compare to see what was available online in terms of the weight that was listed for this bag, um, and it's close enough. It's probably off by like an ounce, um, but it's close enough that I think we can use this. And because if, if I put the scale on my mushy um, blanket here, it probably will not work well. So I'm going to use this as a hard um, bottom. By the way, this beautiful Gucci booklet was sent to me just, I don't know, randomly, I guess because I'm in their database with a beautiful handwritten note inserted in here. And it's all um, just about the Marmont collection. It's so pretty. I don't know what to do with this. I feel like it's too pretty to throw away, but I am very much anti keeping things just for the sake of keeping things. I like to purge and um, I don't, I'm not a big believer of like storage. Um, if I don't need it and appreciate it right this second, I want to get rid of it. So maybe if anyone, are, uh, well, I don't know, it's just a booklet. It's, it's just like a mailed it's nothing special, but it is pretty, uh, maybe for like your coffee table. If you are interested in this booklet, let me know in the comments below because maybe I can mail it to one of you guys if you want it. Otherwise, I'll figure out what to do with it. So anyway, I will use this as the base here. Turn it on. Okay, it's on and let's see. Okay, that reads one pound, about seven ounces. So it's slightly under a pound and a half, so it makes my cutoff. I will say this is a little bit bigger and a little bit heavier than most of the mini bags that I am accustomed to. Um, so it is right up against my personal cutoff. Uh, again, one pound, about seven ounces. And then just as a comparison, I will show you two other bags that are you know, quite popular and you may own them and that might be helpful for you to just see side by side. This is my beloved Louis Vuitton Pochette Matisse that I've only had for about three or four months now, but I love, love, love. The strap is inside here so I can weigh it and do a comparison. Okay, so this one is one pound a little over seven, like seven and a half ounces. So one point, I would say one pound, eight ounces. That's one and a half pounds. So surprising that this weighs pretty much the same as the Antigona Mini, or maybe even a little bit more. I don't know. I don't trust this thing very much, but let's just say that they're both about a pound and a half, which makes my cutoff, which I think is a really good thing. This though feels more comfortable when I wear it, and maybe because it doesn't have that triangular base, it just distributes um, its weight more evenly and is more comfortable. So I will say that in case any of you are curious. And let me just show you in terms of size, if I put one in front of the other, they're pretty much like the exact same size um, forward facing, but then when you go sideways here, 
that's where you see the difference. The Antigona Mini, of course, is much wider at the base. So let's see if I can do this. It's almost like two of the Pochette Matisse's. If I had to put two side by side, that would equal the base, the, um, the widest part of the Antigona Mini. But otherwise, it's, yeah, it's comparable. Okay, and then let me show you another bag. I know there's like super, I don't know, there seems to be a lot of hype about this bag. I purchased this bag on my own with my own money probably a little less than a year ago. Yeah, it was about, it was around Christmas time last year. And that is the Sunrev Mini Maestra. And mine is in the pebbled black leather. See, Sunrev. So I think this is a um, California brand, I believe. And um, all their bags are made in Italy. And the reason why I ordered this, first of all, it was all over Pinterest and Instagram at the time. So I just, I got curious. And I was looking for a bag that would be water resistant um, as a work bag. And this is super water resistant. I mean, it's, I've wiped this clean with just like, even with my hands like this after being in the rain and it's perfect and then you've got the four I mean the quality is quite good considering it's not like a luxury uh, brand so I won't go into detail on this because I could do a review separately if you're interested only if you're interested please let me know in the comments and I will be sure to set aside time for a separate video but for now I wanted to show you a comparison so the weight of the Sunrev Mini Maestra, oops, yeah, this is quite heavy for me, which is probably why I don't use it very often, except for when it's raining, I can stick my umbrella in there and not worry about the bag getting wet too. Um, yep, it's two pounds, almost three ounces. So that is way above my personal cutoff, way above. Um, two pounds, almost three ounces. I sort of regret getting this bag because it's not comfortable for me but it does turn into a backpack uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the Senrev brand so a lot of people love it there's a lot of hype around it I think they also pay a lot of um, like the bigger name youtubers to review it that's not me I'm not a big name <laughs> at all um, but I did purchase this with my own money and I thought it would be an interesting comparison with the Givenchy Antigona Mini because the shape is kind of similar, sort of, just like the side, how it becomes very triangular. You see that? And this is, the Senrev bag is definitely bigger and heavier, but I wanted to give you a comparison in case you own it just to see. There you go. I don't know if that works well. Here. So, yeah, this is definitely heavier. But, again, if you're looking for a secure bag, maybe a travel bag, um, this Sunrev bag is super duper secure. I know a lot of people love that um, because it opens like this. And there's a zipper. And what they're also known for is uh, the compartments. There are a lot of compartments on the inside. So, yeah, like I said, if you're interested, let me know in the comments and I, I can do a review on this bag, but I wanted to do a comparison so you can get a sense. Um, so back to the Givenchy Antigona Mini. There she is. Definitely a larger mini bag, but you need to carry a little bit more than just your essentials and you feel like the true mini bags are too too small for your everyday use this could be a really great bag for you so feel free to leave comments below let me know if you're interested in the Gucci book booklet let me also know if you're interested in a separate review video of the Senrev mini maestro that I just showed you 
and please feel free to ask any questions. I do my best to respond to everyone. Um, and thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I would love for you to subscribe. Thanks. Bye.